Today I am going to address you in English language as desired by you. <coughs> Even tomorrow perhaps we may have to use this foreign language. <coughs> Today's subject is the relationship between Kundalini and Kalaki. The word Kalaki actually is an abbreviation of the word Nishkalank. Nishkalank means the same as my name is, which means Nirmala. That then it is spotlessly clean. Something that is spotlessly clean is Nishkalank without any spots on. Now this incarnation has been described in many Puranas will be coming on this earth on a white horse. In a village of Sambalpur, they call it, Sambhalpur. It's very interesting how people take everything so literally. The word Sambhal means, Bhal is his forehead, Sambhal means at that stage. That means Kalaki is situated on your Bhal. Bhal is the forehead. And here he is going to be born. That is the real meaning of the word Sambhalpu. In between Jesus Christ and his destroying incarnation of Mahavishnu, called as Kalaki, there is a time given to human beings to rectify themselves, for them to enter into the kingdom of God, which in the Bible is called as last judgment. That you will be judged, all of you will be judged on this earth. The population of the world is the maximum, they say, because all those, practically all those who had aspirations to enter into the kingdom of God are born in the modern times and are going to be born very soon. This is the most important time because Sahaja Yoga is the last judgment. It is fantastic to hear this, but that's a fact and is the truth. Though you can understand that mother's love makes it very easy for you to get to your realization and that the whole story of Last Judgment, which looks such a horrifying experience, has been made very beautiful and very tender and delicate and doesn't disturb you. But this is the Last Judgment, I tell you, and you all are going to be judged through Sahaja Yoga whether you can enter into the Kingdom God or not. Now in Sahaja Yoga, people come in with different kind of attentions or chitta. There could be people who have too much of tamasi kritya or what we call the inertia or the more sort of sluggish or slow-moving temperaments. These, when they are exaggerated, people take to spirits or take to alcohols or to some such things which take you away from reality and make you numb with it. The other side is, as you know, right-hand side people who have got too much ambitions. They are extremely ambitious people. They want to win the whole world and they want to become something independent on their own, malignant and cancerous. They do not want to keep their relationship with the whole. You can see in this Kali Yuga how people have gone to their extremes. Some of them are very much indulging into too much of alcoholism or you can call it something running away from your awareness, from yourself, from truth, the beauty. The others are denying it. They are denying everything that is beautiful and are ego-oriented. So we have people who are super ego-oriented, very much conditioned and lethargic 
and lazy and absolutely primitive. The other side is that we have people who are extremely ambitious, dominating, and are destroying each other by their ambition and competition. These two types of people of extreme nature are rather difficult to enter into Sahaja Yoga. But the people who are in the center are easily absorbed in the Sahaja Yoga. Moreover, people who are less complicated, simple-hearted as they are in the villages, are very easily absorbed by Sahaja Yoga and they take to it without any difficulty. Say in the city you can see the result of so much of work of mine that there are hardly about two to three hundred people today over here. But if I go to a village, the whole village, say up to five to six thousand people come round and all of them get their realization without any difficulty. Because here people are supposed to be very busy, they have so many other preoccupations. They think other things are much more important than seeking God and wasting your time in such pursuits like seeking God. Under such circumstances, Sahaja Yoga takes its roots very sweetly into the heart of all the seekers. It works very spontaneously. You get your Realization without any difficulty, without any effort, without paying for it, without going into any sort of strenuous exercise. But when we talk of Kalaki, we have to remember that between getting our Realization and entering into the Kingdom of God, we can falter very much. This is called as Yoga Bhrashtasthiti. People take to yoga, they come into yoga and are then enchanted still by their pravrittis. For example, an ego-oriented man or a money-oriented man or a man who wants to dominate can form a group of people whom he would dominate by his ideas and can go in for a fall and the rest of them will also go down in Sahaja Yoga itself. This has been happening in Bombay very, very often. It's a very, very common thing that has been going on. But this is called as Yoga Bharashtata, where a person falls from his yoga. He comes down on his yoga because Sahaja Yoga gives you all the freedom whether to fall or to come up. But if you go to any other guru doing any other sort of yoga in which purification takes place and where people are trained and disciplined from very childhood, in those yogas a guru will somehow or other see that you are injured or you are hurt so badly that you have no connections with anybody else. It's like, like an operation, they take out that personality and throw him up. But here it is left to your freedom to understand that you have to keep to the mains, you have to keep to the group, you have to keep to the whole and not to one person here and there who is trying to overpower the rest of you. In Sahaja Yoga, anybody who tries to come up too much comes down because in nature you have seen nothing grows out of bounds. Like human beings are of a certain height, the trees are of certain heights, everything is controlled. You cannot try to show off in Sahaja Yoga, neither you should try to make a different group or a different type of some special thing. Especially I have seen in Sahaja Yoga there are people who come up and ask people to touch their feet. It is most surprising that invariably such people get exposed in no time and one knows that they are gone cases. Because their chakras are caught, they are bad, badly caught, though they may not feel for a while, their vibrations may be there, but they go down and down and down till they are completely finished. Now this Yoga Vrashta Siddhi is the worst thing that can happen to anyone. First of all, you don't get your yogas. And if you get your yogas and then jump to this sort of a condition about which Sri Krishna has described, that you go into Rakshasa Yoni. Those who come to Sahaja Yoga must know that you have to stick on to one thing properly, otherwise, what is the yoni left? If you die without yoga, maybe you are born again, maybe. Of course, this life is wasted. But if you try such tricks after coming to Sahaja Yoga and try to impress on others that you are a very great realized soul or that you have achieved this and achieved that, all this nonsense that you have been doing before getting to Realization, 
then there is a very serious offense and you are punished for that. This is the power of Kalaki which is secretly working behind Sahaja Yoga. For example, there was a lady who came to see me, wanted to publish something about me and she was paid by some horrible fellow and she published something nonsensical, something that I never do. So everybody was very annoyed and angry and said, Mother, we must punish her and we must take her to court, we must do defamation. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to go to court, you better go give up these ideas. But nobody would listen. It so happened that that paper closed down for three and a half months and they had such a big setback. Of course, this is not done by me, I would say, as far as Mataji Nirmala Devi is concerned, but it's done by Kalaki. Kalaki means there are eleven powers which are guarding the beauty of Sahaja Yoga. Anybody who tries to play around with Sahaja Yoga is harmed very badly. So today is a day of telling you about the dangers of playing with the Divine. So far, people have been taking them for granted. They have tortured people like Christ, they have tortured great saints. All the time, human beings have been torturing. And I've been warning in every lecture practically that don't try that trick today because Kalaki is already on. And don't try to trouble anybody who is a saintly person, who is a good person. Be careful about it because Kalaki is on. And once this power comes on you, you would not know how to hide yourself. Not only those who are Sahaja Yogi, but this I'm telling to the whole world today that be careful, do not try to harm others, do not try to take advantage of others and do not try to show off your own power. Because once this destruction will start in you, your life, you won't know how to stop it. Once I went to I think I've told you before also this thing that I went to Andhra Pradesh and there I told people that you should not grow any more of this tambaku, tobacco. And they were very angry with me because they thought this was their living. They were minting money and indulging in all kinds of things, making too much money and doing all kinds of papas. I said, in this world today you have come not for creating more pap and more karmas on your head but to do the cleansing of the papas, the papakshkhalana. You have not come here to add to your sins, but to cleanse them, this is the time of cleansing. That's why I am here as Nirmala, to cleanse it. While what are you doing is to add to your papas, what are you going to gain out of growing this horrible tobacco? But they would not listen to me. And then in three of my lectures, it is on the tape people are saying, that I said that be careful. The Kalaki in the sea will take respite on you. It will come on you and you know what happened in Andhra. Same with Morvi, I will tell you, only last year some people met me from Morvi, some very big people from Morvi. And they all believed in a horrible saint who is a horrible fellow and who has really destroyed, destroyed families after families. I told them, why do you believe in this man? He's taking your attention to materialistic things. Why do you believe in him? Every house in Morvi had the picture of this horrible saint. And when I told them, they would not listen to me. They thought that I was just warning them because I was sort of jealous of the fellow. And you know what has happened about Morvi. It's a fact. All these things have been said in the presence of other people so that they have noted it down that what has happened in what place and how Mataji has said. Before that, also in Delhi once, I met some of these people from Vrindavan and who were telling me about the pandas and this and that. And I said, all of you give up your professions, horrible people you are. What business have you got to make money in the name of God? And all those pandits and pandas and all these people are horrible parasites on the society. You get out of your jobs or this, the river Ganges on which you have been Feeding yourself will one day ruin you completely. And when the floods in the river Yamuna and the Ganges came in, I was in London, I saw on the TV all these pandas running away with their khomchas and everything. Of course, with these horrible people when you associate, when you live with them, you also suffer. The innocent suffer. Why should you be impressed by such people? That's the thing you have to pay for. 
When you are impressed, you, you are so compromising. After all, doesn't matter, we are going there, so we must give something to this fellow also. He is a panda of our forefathers sitting down there and begging money, sitting before the river Ganges. Imagine, the giver of love and the giver of joy is flowing there, and these people are sitting with their backs towards the river and asking money from him. What silly people they are, such stupid, useless people. And you pay them money and you think that you have done a great punya by donating money to them. This sort of life we have been leading, a compromising, not understanding what is truth, what is not truth. One side is a complete blind faith into all this kind of thing that is going on in this country and all over the world, but especially too much in this country. We are simple, innocent people with uh, a with lot of bhavikta within us. That's true, but that doesn't mean we should be stupid and foolish. For example, the other day at a meeting in a place called Avargao, I said that these people in the Vithalas Mandir, called as Balave, should be nicely punished for the way they are ill-treating these saints going down there on their feet for days together, and something must be done to them. And everybody was a little annoyed when I said, because for these poor people, these Balavas, who are Rakshasas incarnate, are something great. They break the heads of the people who walk all the thousands of miles there, they break their heads just like coconuts and all of them have pain in the head. Such cruelty they confer on these innocent, simple people. And do you think I should support them when I stand for truth and for religion and for compassion? When I said this, the some people, you see, who had some vested interest, must be the relations of the Balavas or whatever it is, got angry with me. But thank God, within three months' time, the whole thing has been taken over by government. It is so common with us that we see with our open eyes what is happening. Still we will be going on doing the same thing in the temples, even in the name of God, we are doing sins after sins. We are adding sins to our sins and instead of clearing it out and understanding it through our developed brain, we just go on adding it. This is what I call the people who are tamasic, who do not use your brains, they are muda buddhis. They just follow somebody because there's some sort of a hypnotic influence or some sort of a charismatic movement that is on in the West. You can see these charismatic people will take thousands of rupees from them, thousands of rupees, and they will give them epilepsy, gangrene, if not that, madness, lunacy, all sorts of things. But people like mad are running after all these movements and are adding up to their destruction, to their pile of sins that they have committed instead of spending some time in cleansing their sins. This time, what we have got is the most precious time and one has to be very careful and alert about oneself. One should not depend on any other person for help in this but should try to completely consolidate one's own being into the kingdom of God and occupy the highest seat in the heart of God Almighty. Because when Kalaki will come, he will slaughter all these people without any compassion. He is devoid of any compassion. There are eleven Rudras in him, means there are eleven destructive powers absolutely powerfully settled in him. And when I see all that, because I can see all that, this emergency grows into me and I tell you, beware of it. Don't play fool with it. Don't take it easy and do not compromise with nonsensical people. Stick on to the right. Otherwise, the day is very near when Kalaki is going to come. The other type of people are who think no end of their uh, intelligence. They have denied God. They say, where is God? There is no God. We don't believe in God. It's all nonsense. Science is everything. What has science done so far? Let's see that. What has science done for us? Science has done nothing so far. 
It has only done all dead work. It has only made you ego-oriented. All the West is ego-oriented. They are finding all the methods of committing sins. How to commit the worst sins, they are finding methods. And there are certain gurus in India who are also supplying the knowledge how to commit even worse and worse and worse sins. So they can easily go with two running jumps to hell. Whatever is wrong is wrong, whether it is today, tomorrow, or yesterday, or thousands of years back, whatever is wrong for your dharma, for your sustenance is wrong. The new phrase is that what's wrong in this, what's wrong in that, that question will be answered by Kalaki only. I'm just telling you that it is wrong, and it is extremely wrong, it is against your ascent, it is against your being, and then you will not have any time to repent and to ask this question, what's wrong, you will be chopped off. That is what is the Kalaki incarnation. He is going to come on a white horse, as they say. It's a tremendous thing that is going to work out. Every human being is going to be sorted out. And nobody can then claim, see, everything is being advertised, everything is being published, even this instrument that is created by science we can use for spreading Sahaja Yoga, you know that if I put it on my chakras, you get the vibrations and you get your realization. The whole science is subservient to Sahaja Yoga. Like the other day some TV people came, they said, Mother, we want to have your TV done. I said, you be careful before doing it. I don't want any publicity. But whatever you do, it, do it properly. Through TV, we can give Sahaja Yoga. Supposing I'm there on the TV screen, I can ask people to put their hands, and there can, can be thousands who can get realization only seeing on the TV. is a fact that this is emitting from my being is a fact. Why should you feel angry about it? Why don't you come and test it? Why should you be hurt? Why your ego should hurt you if I am like that? If you are different, it doesn't hurt me at all. If you know one work of, say, organizing this or that, I don't feel bad. Why should you feel bad if somebody is a divine personality? Why did you feel bad that Christ was a divine personality? Why did you murder him? Why did you kill him? Why did you torture all the people who were such saintly people? You were very wise and sweet, isn't it? You have been very kind and nice people, running after all kinds of wrong type of useless, misguiding people. There are so many now who have come to misguide. They are taking money for you for misguiding. They are taking money for giving you sins. They are nicely booking you up for a trip to hell. They themselves are booked nicely there. And when I say about them, people feel very hurt that why should Mataji talk against these gurus? They are not gurus, they are Rakshasas. Once Christ stood up and said, these devils and the children of devil will have to go to hell. Then people got after him, they said, why do you say such things against them? They don't say anything against each other. Christ said, the Satan is not going to speak against his own house. They are very friendly with each other. There is no problem among them. They are very kind to each other. Now all the disciples are being distributed. You take such a lot, I take such a lot, and all of us will go to hell direct. It's properly organized, <laughs> like one train is going first, then the second train will leave, then the third train will leave. The other side of this kind of ambitiousness and the kind of ego orientation and money orientation we have, all the time we are busy with this money. I call it a Brahma, call it a hallucination. It's a big hallucination with you people that you are running after money. It's another hallucination that you are running after Pretatmas and dead bodies. These are two mirages you are running after. What are you going to get out of this money? Go and see somebody who is supposed to be a very, very rich man. 
Just go and see, is he a happy man? What is the analysis of his life? So-called successful people, you just go and see them, what is the success they have? Who respects them? When they turn their back, people say, Oh God, whose face have I seen? Let me go and wash my mouth. Are you auspicious? If somebody sees you, does any good comes out of you, some shuva happens to that person, are you kalyanamai? Are you mangalmai? What sort of a personality are you? Just judge yourself and that judgment can take place here in Sahaja Yoga. We had a patient who came to Sahaja Yoga and he told me, Mother, I'm a young boy but I don't know what has happened to me that I have become inauspicious. I said, how do you know? He said, wherever I go, there's a quarrel between husband and wife, something goes wrong with the children, the children start crying and shouting and screaming. And now I'm hated by everyone, everybody says there's something wrong with you. I found out about him, what was the matter. He got cured. Now he is emitting beautiful vibrations. You can have very negative vibrations going out of you. You might be doing sins without your knowledge and you would say, Oh, Mother, I am getting all the vibrations, I am very good. Such people always deceive themselves and others, very good at it. Oh, nothing wrong with me, I am in first class condition, my vibrations are the best and that I am doing very well. Who is going to judge you is your deed. What good have you done to others? Recently we had a, a mishap like that and I found all those people who were touched by that gentleman had left Swadishtana catching very bad. And when I told them that this was a wrong thing to do is to make this man so important, they all got after my life. There was a doctor who had come to see me who is a Sahajogi. His son came to see me, he's eight year old, he was a very good boy, had a realization but he had a very bad Swadishtana. So I asked him, does this man come to your house? He says, yes, mother, he comes very often. Despite my warning, he would go to their house and they would entertain that gentleman. Instead of telling him that you go to mother and get yourself cleared out. You see, they are enticed and hypnotized by such a person. I asked him, I said, have you got this man coming to your house? Yes, he said. I said, all right, go and beat him with shoes as we do in our Sahaja Yoga. And the boy got cleared out. Do you want to ruin your family, your children, everybody because you are adhering to some hypnotic fellow? At least have some consideration for them. There are many like this but in Sahaja Yoga it is very easy to discern and even in London I know who is going where, what they are doing. I write to them, I tell them don't do it, just don't do it, I have nothing to do. Immediately you must understand that our mother who knows these things, she knows and she, she, she has told us, it is the thing that is to be done, not to be argued. Did you get your vibrations through arguments? But still in Sahaja Yoga also people falter and that's the worst thing they will do because Yoga Bharashtas are the most condemned. Where will they go? I have to warn all the Sahaja Yogis who are here because Sahaja Yoga is the last judgment. Not only that you will be judged that you are entering into the kingdom of God, that you become the citizens of God is correct, but apart from that, that you are capable of being there, whether you have the complete surrendering and understanding of divine laws. Even if you are belonging to say India and a citizen of India, but if you do mistakes and if you commit criminal laws, you'll be punished even then. So even if you become the citizen of God, you have to be very, very careful about it. The second thing I would like to tell you is about the destroying powers of Kalagi. Today's lecture is going to be very sharp for you because the incarnation that you have asked me to speak on is a very sharp one, is the sharpest of all. We had, say, Krishna's incarnation when he had Hanana Shakti. He has killed Kamsa, he has killed uh, so many Rakshasas, you know, as child also, he has killed Putana and so many people. But he had Leela also. He had love. And he did give concessions to people. He forgave people also. But Christ, who is the embodiment of forgiveness, 
forgiveness of Christ is nothing but is the power of sustenance within Him. If He explodes, the whole forgiveness can come on us as a big disaster if we are not able to understand the value of His forgiveness. He has said very clearly that anything said against Me will be tolerated, but a word against Holy Ghost won't be tolerated. He has clearly said it. And now you have to understand that. Holy Ghost is Adi Shakti. One has to understand that such an incarnation is imminent. And Krishna's powers are given to him which are only Hanana Shakti. Brahma Deva's powers which are only Hanana Shakti are given to him. Shiva's powers which are just Hanana Shakti, the part of it which is a Tandava is given to him. Then Bhairava Shakti, which is also, you know what Bhairava has got a symbol of killing, is a big sword like thing. And also Ganesha's Parasha and also Hanumana's, all Navasiddhis, which are going to destroy, are given to him. All Buddha's forgiveness and Mahavira's Ahimsa is going to turn upside down. All these eleven powers are going to come on top of us when we will be finished with Sahaja Yoga, when we will be absolutely sorted out and the last killing will be done by Him. I wish it was just a killing. It is not going to be ordinary Hanana like uh, even Devi has done. Because Devi has killed all these Rakshasas thousands of years back, but they are back in the seat again, all these Rakshasas. Now the problem is very different at the present moment, which you should try to understand. That in the olden days, till the Krishna's time, when he says that yada yada ahi dharma sar glanir bhavati bharata, vinashaya cha duskrutam paritranaya cha sadhuna. These two words you must understand. To destroy the Duskrutam means the cruel people or the negative forces and to save the saints. Sambhavami, yuge, yuge, I am going to come again and again. But the problem of the Kali Yuga is that there is no pure and simple person as a sadhu or as a Rakshasa. So many Rakshasas have entered into your brains. You side with so many people who are wrong, who are doing wrong, who are doing all kinds of wrong things in the name of politics, in the name of religion, in the name of progress and education and all that. Once you are sided with them, then they are in your brain, they are within you. And when they are within you, how to destroy the Dushtritams? They are within you. You may be a good person, but you may be destroyed because of having them in your heads. So there is no hard and fast rule as to say who is a real negative and who is a real positive. Only the Sahaja Yoga is going to cleanse you and make you absolutely positive, positively good people and religious people. This is the only way because your Ankura, when it starts giving you realization, you feel yourself, you feel yourself, and with that self, you know that you are yourself and not this mirage. You start enjoying that self, once you start enjoying it, you give up all these things that make you compromise and make you a horribly mixed up person. All this confusion can go away. So it is essential that we should take to Sahaja Yoga in the most dedicated manner and redeem ourselves of our all wrongdoings and also others whom we know. And this is the only thing that we can give to our friends, relations and all the world around. People invite others for dinners, have drinks, this, that. What do you give them? Nothing. They will give presents in, on a birthday, they'll go around and give garlands and exchange food wishes and everything. The, in London, when there's a Christmas day, the cards piled up, pile up to such an extent that no letter can be sent for ten days before Christmas. And where is Christ 
on the day when Christ is born, they'll go in for a champagne. Such foolish people, even somebody dies, they'll go for a champagne. Champagne is their religion now, and whiskey is their uh, kundalini. They cannot understand God. How can they, when they have made God according to their own conception of falsehood? As a mother, I have to warn you, be careful. Do not play about with yourself. Do not go down, but come up, come up and come up. I am here to help you. I am here to work for you day and night, that you know I work very hard for you. I'll spare no efforts to help you and do everything that is possible to make you all right to pass this examination of last judgment. But you have to cooperate with me and you have to go headlong about it and devote most of your time for Sahaja Yoga and for imbibing all that is great and noble. Kalaki is a very big subject and uh, if you see the Kalaki Purana is such a big book, of course, a lot of trash is also in there. But when is the time coming if people say, we'll say this is a living process, when the work will be finished, when we will see that there's no more chance of having any more people in this line, Kalaki will come down. Let us see how many come in, but there is a limit also of that. So I would request you to go out, call your friends, call your relations, call your neighbors, all of them, Tomorrow is the last day of my program here of Navratri, where we are going to have a little, little felicitation from the mother. <laughs> to me, the greatest felicitations would be when this in this Bombay, I will find more people realize taking to Sahaja Yoga seriously. And after coming to Sahaja Yoga, not to indulge in backbiting and small petty-mindedness and getting angry with each other, but being sensible and wise. It is most surprising those who are supposed to be the cream of the nation, the most sophisticated people, are so petty-minded and useless. I have to tell you these things because of the immediate emergency that is coming forward before me. And I am only praying that it should not be in Bombay that it should start. Bombay had gone into the verge, if you remember, the day when uh, Rajesh uh, Shah phoned me that, Mother, what about rain, what about rain, what about rain? I wouldn't answer him till he said, Mother, I know you are angry with Bombay people, but still forgive them, answer rain. And that is the night when you started getting all this rain. Next calamity, beware of it. I have to tell all Bombay people, every time I come back, I find this kind of a nonsense of these Sahaja Yogis getting after one man somewhere and getting lost. And the another thing is that Bombay people are still most unaware of what is going to fall into them, most unaware how they are made from amoeba to this stage, what God has done for them and what they have to do for God. It's a very, very sad affair, extremely sad for the whole of the country because people try to follow this Bombay. There are so many people who would like to follow an actor and an actress than to follow God. This is the trouble with our superficial temperaments. I have to say that we have tomorrow a very good program and also a book has been written that went by uh, Gregor de Calibur, Calibur Matten who is a son of a baron and a, a Swiss boy. And when he came to me, I could see clearly that he's a seeker. Though he was a gone case, he was like a schizophrenic person. Absolutely a gone case, but I could see in him that there's a big seeker within him. And I had to work hard with him for a year to bring him around to his normal senses. But when there is not even seeking within you and when you go that astray, what is going to happen to you? I don't know. So be careful. Be very, very careful. Today is the day of warning you because you have asked me to talk about Kalaki. He is placed on our forehead. When the Kalaki is, is caught up, the chakra of Kalaki is caught up, the whole of Buddha on top, 
goes out of order. In the Kundalini awakening, we find that the murdha is all out of order, it doesn't rise, the whole head becomes a blockhead. Such people do not allow the Kundalini to rise above the, we can say, the Hamsa chakra. At the most they might try to raise up to Agya, but the Kundalini falls down. Of course, one of the reasons, as I said, that if you uh, put your forehead before wrong gurus, also you suffer. But too much thinking also creates a problem on the right-hand side here, and one of the, uh, one of the aspects of Kalaki gets spoiled, and there is an imbalance created on this side. The whole forehead, if it is uh, full of lots of bumps, then one must know that the Kalaki Chakra is out of order. If the Kalaki Chakra is out of order, the person is about to go into some sort of a very bad calamity, is a sign of a person who is going to get. When the Kalaki Chakra is caught up, all your fingers start burning. On the <coughs> hands and on the palm, sometimes even in the body, you get terrible burning. A person's Kalaki Chakra catching means he might be down with a horrible disease like cancer, maybe leprosy, maybe any such diseases, or maybe that he is about to collapse into some sort of a calamity. So Kalaki Chakra must be kept all right in balance. At least there are 11 sub-chakras of the Kalaki Chakra. And out of them, at least try to keep some of them alive so that the others can be rescued. But if all the chakras are ruined, then it is very difficult to give you realization. What is the thing one should do to keep your Kalaki all right? To keep your Kalaki all right, you must have that awe for God. If you do not have awe for God, if you are not afraid of God, if you are not afraid, that if you do wrong, he is there with his wrath, and that he is a wrathful God, and that he is full of poison for us if we try to do anything wrong, if there is no fear of that. Not that it is to be hidden from me or from anybody else, but not you yourself know that you are doing wrong. If you are doing something wrong and you know in your hearts of hearts that I am doing something wrong, please don't do it, otherwise your kalki will go out. When you have that awe for God and you know that God is all-pervading, He is all-powerful, He has powers to raise us to this state of higher being and also He has power to bestow all the blessings that He has. He is the most compassionate God or we can say the most compassionate Father that one can think of. But in the same way, He has a wrath and that wrath when falls upon you, be very, very careful. As a mother, I have to warn, be careful about the wrath of your father, because if he comes on you with that wrath, nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it, and the compassion of mother also will not be listened to, because he may say that you have spoiled your children by giving them too much looseness. So I have to tell you that please don't do anything that is wrong, and do not make me feel bad about it, because for a mother it is very difficult to tell these things. It's very hard for a mother who has a tender heart and a kind heart for you to say all these things. But I have to request you that don't play about, because your father is full of wrath, and he can punish you if you do anything wrong. But if you do anything for him or for your own being, for in your self-realization, you will be placed in the highest position. Today you may be the biggest millionaire, you may be the richest man, you may be the greatest political leader, you may be the prime minister and all that nonsense. In the presence of God, those who are dear to God will be placed at the highest positions and not all these worldly things which look so interesting and enchanting to you. The most important thing, where are you as far as God is concerned? That relation you must establish by first finding out yourself, your Atma through Sahaja Yoga and then relating yourself to that. May God bless you all. Now we'll have a session of Sahaja Yoga for you to get corrected and I would like those people who have not been here before to come forward to get their realization and all the Sahaja Yogis to help me today because today being Kalki's day, vibrations have been a bit too much.